To be honest with you guys, I had a very bad week personally, so sorry for no uploads. I am okay. I still got a ton of work to do as far as this season. I had the chance to play Freelance Trials on Monday afternoon. I picked up some Adept Whistler's Whim. There are seven that I kept, and these are going to be the roles you're going to be seeing throughout the review. Tunnel Vision with Kill Clip or Gut Shot. Thresh, Adrenaline Junkie or Successful Warm Up. Rapid Hit, Kill Clip or Junkie. Thresh, Opening Shot or Junkie. Moving Target. Archer's Tempo or Gut Shot, Killing Wind with Swashbuckler or Gut Shot, Thresh with Kill Clip or Opening Shot. This bow has some really good perks, very unique things about it, and I see a lot of talk about Gut Shot or Kill Clip, one way or the other, this is better. There's some other perk combinations to talk about. Now, I'm not sure if you're gonna like my answer to that, Kill Clip or Gut Shot, I do have an answer. But in this review, I'm gonna walk through this bow, the play style, because how you play is gonna be the deciding factor. There's a ton of information sprinkled in this review. There are mistakes to be made when putting on certain bowstrings and arrows. I'm gonna show you those. Now, I do use bows. I mean, I did put over a thousand PvP kills on Hush when it came out. That was back on console, 30 frames, base field of view. And I use them every now and again. And I wanna get something out of the way with this thing. The shooting experience, to me, is terrible. No other way to put it, but the sight, the weapon model sucks. It sucks. It's one of the most obstructive bows in the game. One of the most obstructive weapons in the game when you're firing. And I can't tell you how many times I've completely missed enemies and how many times that just flat out got me killed. I have learned to sweep, to check, to clear from right to left. And things like that hit players differently. It's very noticeable to me. I hate it. But moving on. Whistler's Whim is a kinetic lightweight bow. Now, lightweight bow is an important factor. It's the least used. So much so that they got buffed. Let's remember those buffs. They reduced the base draw time by 5%. So it went from 612 to 580 milliseconds. They increased the perfect draw window from 0.3 to 0.5 on the low end, from 0.55 to 0.80 on the high end. So they are better off than they were before much more approachable. But the issue with the lightweight bows has always been the accuracy, the accuracy, the accuracy. So as far as the stats, it has the best starting accuracy of the lightweight legendaries, the best stability, the best handling, the best reload, but a modest 74 aim assist. The aim assist is gonna be tied for the lowest. It's kind of offset by the accuracy and you can do a lot of things for the aim assist on this bow. And one thing I noticed, it is extremely good from the air. And a lot of this gameplay, you are seeing gut shot, and that gives you decreased target acquisition. I am running Adept Targeting. I'm running Bow Targeting on my helmet. I'm not running Icarus. It's very accurate from the air, surprisingly accurate. And it's not a one-time thing either. Multiple times I've landed really good shots from the air. But with the lightweights, they feel like they're in slow motion, even though they're the fastest in the game, even though you get the lightweight bonus, the arrows just kind of slog along. So to account for that accuracy, they did everything but give that stat love. Instead, it draws even faster. It has a better window to hit a more accurate high damage shot. So it comes down to two things, accuracy and draw time. The more accurate it is, the more likely the shot's gonna land. The shot's gonna feel better. And the faster the draw time, self-explanatory. That's what you want. So out of the gate, we have something on the bow itself to help some of that, the Vice Stinger trait. On bows, when the perk procs, the bows receive faster draw speed, so the knock. Don't count on it, but it does show up, and it is 100% helping the bow. It's effective. It makes it passively better when it wants to. It's a W for it. The damage profile for the Crucible, and this is mostly a PvP review, I have some small thoughts at the end on PvE. It deals 138 to the head, 86 to the body, a two headshot TTK, it's a one crit, one body TTK, or three body shots. So when it comes to your bowstring and arrow, those two things matter the most, accuracy and draw speed, so that's what you equip. The three bowstrings that stick out, number one overall to me at least, polymer string. Plus five accuracy, negative 40 to the draw time. So it brings it down to 540 on your draw time. Best of all worlds. Next, we have the natural string. Plus five to accuracy, stability, and handling. It's good balance, there's no negatives. Then we have the flexible string. It's negative five to your accuracy, but it makes your draw time 40 faster. So it brings it down to 540. Also plus 10 handling. After that, you start getting into some pretty big penalties. Like elastic string is great. Gets the draw time down to 500, but it's negative 10 accuracy. It brings it to 28. So. That pretty much puts it in line with the other lightweight bows. And if you have something like an accuracy masterwork, you can negate that penalty. High tension string, plus 15 accuracy, but plus 40 draw time. So it makes the draw time 620. You wanna stay away from things like that. For the arrow, fiberglass, plus 15 accuracy, negative five stability. It's a big boost to something that you need with a great trade-off on a bow, negative five stability. Then we have straight fletching, which is plus 10 accuracy, and helical fletching plus five accuracy, plus five stability. In a perfect world, it's gonna be polymer with fiberglass. So let's talk about the perks, a very unique perk pool for a bow, not only for a lightweight bow, but for any bow. It's got multiple perks that help it. In the third column, we have rapid hit. It's always gonna be good. Land crits, faster knock speed for your reload and stability. Killing wind, 
a big deal for it. Plus 20 range, 50 mobility, 40 handling, 30% reduced movement speed penalty. So it's gonna max the handling pretty much at 100. So get a kill, it immediately reloads in the next arrow. Killing wind is up, lasts for five seconds. Additional kills, add five seconds, caps out at eight. It's a great perk for it. We have Thresh, it's a dying perk. Only two weapons this season got it. Get some kills, get a tad bit of super energy. Cornered, not so much, maybe PVE. Two enemies need to be within 15 meters of you. You get a faster draw speed, but they had to be 15 and in. So take into account other perks, the Vice Stinger helping the knock speed. There are some better things here for it. Rangefinder, adding zoom, it's gonna be a good option. Really good for a lightweight bow. Adding accuracy by doing this. Moving target, another great one. Even for M and K, because the accuracy stat. Aim down sights, you get that passive plus 10 aim assist. Tunnel vision, another great perk. Bows, again, have that fast knock speed, fast reload. So when you secure that kill, it's gonna bring that arrow right in. You now have plus 20 aim assist, which is gonna be good for it. 20% accuracy cone size. Lasts for five seconds. Gives you an ADS multiplier, so a faster ADS. All the things that you want for a bow, tunnel vision helps it out. Fourth, last column, opening shot. Burst of accuracy and range on your shot. It's good, it's, it's always been good. It's not a bad option. It's there if you want it. Kill clip, the first ever bow with it. And again, bows have a fast reload. Get a kill, it like chambers right in, knocks right in. 33% more damage, it takes the crit to 183. And that means a couple things, number one, it's one of the highest damage weapons with this perk coming from a primary. Two, damage sources on top will allow it to get over 200 and one shot as a lightweight bow. And you can do it fast because that draw speed. So kill clip is definitely an option. Archer's tempo, get a headshot tag. The bow draws 25% faster for three seconds. It's always been good. Adrenaline junkie, it's another way to 33% more damage, this time by grenade. Stack to times five, weapon kills gradually get it to 33%. But after you get a kill, you also get around 20 handling. Then Swashbuckler, yet another way to your 33% more damage, but this time by melee. It's the same deal, it ramps up with your weapon final blows, times one, two, three, four, and five, but you do not get the plus 20 handling like you do with Adrenaline Junkie. Successful warm up, get a kill. The bow draws 37% faster, it's no joke. It's very fast. Each kill after that, you add on four seconds. It's a great perk. Gut shot straight. When this perk came out, I've said it numerous times in my videos. I've said it on multiple podcasts. Gutshot is built different for a couple weapons, hand cannons and bows. Hand cannons and bows get the 20% more body damage when the perk is active. So you get a reduced 35% aim assist cone penalty, but 20% more body damage. So this brings the body shot damage to 103, which is around what the precision frame bows do, and it erases a three shot body shot for these bows. So all of this makes it special. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. It has the best in class stats. It has unique things that you can do with it. No other things can do. Now, I got all the perks that I wanted to try, those perk combinations. There's something that you need to remember. If you take anything from this video, take this. It's something you should be doing because when you do it, it will excel. This bow will perform, period. No matter what role that you have. If you're having a hard time with this bow, think about this, give it another rip. No matter what perk combo, what you're trying to do with it, what perk you're focusing on. Now, I'm going to talk about these perks in a second with the combinations. This bow, all bows, aside from a select few, are best used two ways and two ways only. They are high damage weapons that take primary ammo. An arrow. It has a draw time. That's going to be the trade-off. So the first way, find a teammate, glue yourself to them. Be in their hip. You're going to have a better time and this bow is going to perform better when you do that. You almost have to. Do not lone wolf with this bow. Or most bows for that matter. The secondary perk that you're using will matter more. It will proc more when you do this. The second way is to always be next to cover. Now you should always be doing this, but with the bow, aside from a pure switch, like bow shot Ariana or bow shot hand cannon, a cleanup, a follow up, you want to be next to cover, shooting your shot, as you draw, go back into cover, come back out, shoot your shot. Because if you're out in the open, drawing twice, you're in trouble. Even the fastest speed bows have an issue here. And the only two bows they can do better is gonna be Hush, some crazy speed ones like Archer's Tempo, Rabbit Hit, and Monarch a little bit. And Monarch's gonna be talked about a little bit as I go forward, mostly in the PVE section. But those two things you need to keep in mind. Those things, holding hands with a teammate, Writing cover is going to bring a different view on the debate between gut shot and kill clip. So it's crucial that you do that. With those perks, you need certain things with them. So let's talk about gut shot. The value is that you can two shot body shot. If you're in a team shot setting, doing what we just went over, it's going to excel because you are chunking them 103, 103 in a team shot setting. The bow is doing what it's supposed to do. And the role that you're using, the role that you wanted is performing the way it should be performing. You are cleaning up or you are priming. 
Worst case scenario, you're in cover, you double body shot. And it's the idea that you're doing it faster than a precision bow. That is the key. The draw speed, the 580, the 540, the 500. And those things we talked about earlier, the accuracy, the draw time, keeping it fast, keeping it true. Look at this. We have 61 accuracy. We got gut shots, got clean stats, looks good on paper. But look, you need to stay away from things that increase your draw time. It goes to 620. So let's break that down. Gut shot takes away your target acquisition, so you up your accuracy. Maybe you have moving target there, maybe tunnel vision, maybe rangefinder. Do you know what this is? The 620 draw lightweight bow. This is a great value knockoff watered down precision frame. Like look at this wolf tone. It has 648 draw, so 620, 648. The wolf tone has plus 20 range. The aim assist can be up from 68. The wolf tone has archer's tempo in the left column for its speed. Whistler's has it in the right. But the whole idea is the double body, right? Precision bows hit for 101 to the body. It can double body at base. It doesn't need all the crazy things that Whistler Wim has going on. So you need to see what you're doing with the bow. Don't do this. Any perk that increases it past 580, and I honestly think that 580 isn't really good for these. It needs to be 540 or 500. 500 is going to be the best. Because even if you're aiming at the head and you hit the body, that is perfect because you have on gut shot. That's what you're doing anyway. You need speed. Because if you're going to set it up with a 620 draw time, you need to be using a precision bow. So to me, I play with a lot of these roles. What makes sense is pairing it with Killing Wind. Hear me out. When you break down the play style, having success with it, playing cover, hand holding a teammate, laning, landing body shots, because gut shot's there for a double body. That's the perk that you wanted. That's what you're trying to do. So the kills will happen in a team shot setting. If you're being somebody's shadow, it's going to happen. But when it happens, the bow gets plus 20 range. That's gonna help out the accuracy a ton. But what helps the most is the strafe scaler. When you break it down, you have a fast draw speed, you now have a strafe scaler that is the fastest in the game. It allows you to get in and out faster doing your double body. And when you're playing in the back, getting your chip damage, it is the perfect pairing to complete the body shot bandit bow. That isn't to say that moving target gut shot isn't fantastic, because it is. Moving target gives a 3% reduced movement speed penalty. Killing wind is a 30% reduced movement speed penalty. It's so much faster. You are flying with killing wind. And it feels so good to go in and out of cover with that fast draw speed. And with moving target, you're getting that plus 10 aim assist to help with that gut shot penalty. It's good. Then we have tunnel vision. Again, if you're playing it right, the kills are coming. It's going to happen if you're being somebody's shadow. You're going to get the final blow. It could be a headshot. could be a body shot. Knock in the arrow. Reloads pretty much immediately. Plus 20 aim assist. Faster aim down sights. The accuracy cone help. It's helping gut shot. Things like rangefinder works. Rapid hit works. But as far as gut shot, with its acquisition penalty, with what you're trying to do with a double body, moving target, tunnel vision, and my personal favorite, killing wind. So the other debate is kill clip. And I actually prefer Kill Clip, and I'm going to tell you why. With a damage bonus on top of Kill Clip, it one-shots. That's cool. That's something that you build into. Like, you can't look at this and tell me, hey, Gut Shot is so much better than Kill Clip. There's no way you can look at this and say, you know what? Kill Clip's kind of overrated. It's actually elite. But to dive back into it, it's a lot different on a bow. Because again, it's near instant. So you get that final blow. Could be a body shot, could be a headshot. Immediately you load in Kill Clip. That's 183. And that matches what Monarch does with a 10% bonus. So 183 on a fast drawing, lightweight bow. What you need to realize, bringing up that play style, the holding the hands, being somebody's shadow, playing cover, being an asset to your team. 183 is massive. A single bullet from any source, plus your 183, will down your enemy. The worst case is a rapid fire AR for 13 damage. One shot from a rapid fire AR is going to be 196. So in a team shot setting, the moment that you shoot them, they will die. 183 is a little bit different than 101. If any damage is put in, the target will go down. It is massive chunk damage, and that's how I like to play it. Sure, I get in the one shots, but if you stay with your team, get that final blow, continue pushing with them or defending with them, they get deleted. It is fast, high damage with the draw speed. That's why I like it. I do like both perks, I do, but both of them require you to have different mindsets to do different things. One is a fast double body, elevated by tunnel vision, elevated by moving target, really elevated by killing wind. Now the other is a very potent bow shot, crazy burst damage on an arrow that could be shot at 500 draw time. As far as the kill clip pairing, I have loved tunnel vision. It makes all those kill clip shots really crispy. And of course, again, moving target, rabbit hit, rangefinder, they all can work. But other than those, 
We have the Adrenaline Junkie for those grenade builds. We have Swash for the melees. We also have Speed, it's there. You might fall into a role, and that's another thing, it's all RNG, right? You might fall into a role that is the fastest draw speed it can go. Maybe you hit on the, you get on the bowstring, you hit on the arrow, you get Archer's Tempo, Rapid Hit. Don't discount that, that's a special thing itself. But the main thing, you want fast draw, high accuracy. Whatever you gotta do to get that. Don't sacrifice draw speed for accuracy. Draw speed comes first. Don't ever go above 580. You want to get it to 540 at least. 500 is the floor, and that is going to be the best. And it's important, I got to reiterate, you cannot lone wolf. You're going to have a bad time if you do that. If you go to try to slay out and see what this thing's got, you're going to get crushed. It's a special bow, but not that kind of special. Be with your team, it's going to be great. As far as PvE, Kill Clip sticks out, but the deal with bows in PvE, yes, you can get Swash going, a Drill and Junkie going, you get a fast Archer's Tempo going. Throw in the Vice Stinger, you're looking really good. But with Monarch having Unrelenting and Stunning Barrier, it's so hard to put down in PvE. Yes, that does take an exotic slot, but it is worth it. Honestly, if you wanted to use this for PvE, I would be searching for Kill Clip because it is instant. It is going to be an add shredder, and it can start chunking down some yellow bars. You can even put Adept Big Ones on it if you have the Adept version. Quick conclusion here, you're going to see the true power of Gutshot or Kill Clip, one or the other, once you start doing those two things. Really holding cover and be in somebody's pocket. This thing will perform if you do that. So let's talk about Whistler's Whim down below. If you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button. And if you are subscribed, thank you so much for your support. What do you think about this bow? What perks do you like on it? There's a lot to talk about. Thank you for watching. And until the next one, I am Cool Guy.